Uh, thanks, Steve. Uh, good afternoon, good morning to the participants as per your location, and thanks to uh, management of CI Automotive India Limited for giving us the opportunity to host the call. Uh, we have with us Mr. Ander Alvarez, CEO, Mr. K. Jayaprakash, uh, CFO, Mr. Vikas Kina, Senior VP Strategy, and Mr. Oro Plafoin, Business Controller, representing the CIA management. Uh, without wasting any time, uh, over to the management for their initial comment. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Vasudev. I hope I am audible. Yes, sir. Good day, friends. I welcome all of you on this call, as also Ander Arunatsa, our CEO. We are going to talk about CIE India results for Q1 C24. Uh, we follow the calendar year, so the first quarter of calendar year 2024. At the outset, we would like to mention that Bill Forge Mexico, that is BF Mexico, is now a subsidiary of CIE Galfor post the equity infusion in uh, BF Mexico done by CIE Galfor. Please note this slight change in the legal structure. Now we start with the business results of the India operations of CIE India for Q1 C24, which are on page 7 of the uploaded presentation. Sales grew by 6% to uh, Rs. 14,388 million versus Q1 C23. Uh, Q1 C23. In this quarter, the EBITDA of the Indian operations was uh, rupees. 2,684 million, EBIT rupees 2,126 million, and EBT 2,053 million. While sales grew by 6% year on year, EBITDA grew by 18%, EBIT 24%, and EBT 25% in the India operations uh, year on year versus Q1 C23. EBITDA margin in Q1 C24 was at 18.7%. But this includes a one-off subsidy benefit in our aluminium business. Without that subsidy, the recurrent EBITDA margin in the India business for Q1 C24 is 17.2%, which is higher both year-on-year -year and sequentially, uh, versus 16.7% in Q1 C23 and 16.5% in Q4 C23. The market scenario in India in Q1 C24 was mixed. The light vehicles and two-wheeler production have grown, but the tractor and MHCV markets have shrunk in this quarter. The two-wheeler market has shown good growth on the back of recovering rural and suburban demand, and we expect this trend to continue. Light vehicles are expected to continue growing at a steady rate. We also expect the tractor market to recover slightly in the second half of the year. In our earlier calls, we had talked about some of our new orders, especially in the EV space being delayed. We expect these to start rank, ramping up in the second half of CY24. The results of the European operation of CIE India for Q1 C24 are on page 8. We recorded sales of Rs. 8,941 million, which represents a drop of 7% year on year. It is pertinent to note that Q1 C23 was an exceptional quarter in terms of sales with pent-up demand driving up sales in the European light vehicles market. The higher base of Q1 C23 has contributed to the sales drop year on year. If one looks at sequential growth, sales in Q1 C24 grew by 22% versus Q4 C23. In Q1 C24, the EBITDA margin in our European operations was EBITDA was uh, rupees 1,435 million, EBIT rupees 1,130 million, and EBT rupees 986 million, which meant an EBITDA margin of 16%, EBIT of 12.6%, and EBT of 11%. The EBITDA margin in the European operations in Q1 C24 was adversely affected by lower sales and also because of stock reduction. This stock reduction uh, took place because of Easter holidays falling in the first quarter of this year, while last year it was in the second quarter. So that effect on margin is there. The European light vehicle market has degrown by 3% in Q1 C24 after a period of high growth of 13% in 2023. 
These trends are expected to continue with IHS forecasting European light vehicle production in 2024 to be 2% lower than in 2023. The slowdown in the U.S. construction equipment market continues and is expected to start picking up towards the end of the year. Sales at Metal Castello will thus be adversely affected in this calendar year. And now if we go to page 9, we will see the consolidated results. In Q1 C24, CIE India on a consolidated basis achieved sales of uh, rupees 23,329 million, EBITDA of 4,119 million at a margin of 17.7 percent, EBIT of rupees 3,255 million at 14 percent, and EBT of rupees uh, 3,039 million uh, at 13 percent. The margins have increased on both a year on year and sequential basis. These are the highest quarterly margins that CIE India has achieved on a consolidated basis and these margins are now aligning quite well with CIE ratios globally. In closing, we would like to state that we continue to focus on growth and growing with our customers uh, so that we can take advantage of all opportunities that come our way. And now we can proceed to Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. We will wait for assembles. The first question is from the cat button. Please go. Account. Correct understanding, right? You just got cut off in this. The Mexico business. In the India business, India finance. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, and secondly, the 22 crores of was electric. Uh, that is accounted in other income or is part of other operating? Other income. Got. Uh, decline on drop. I mean, the P basis obviously there is a seven percent. Would zero basis be close to 11% uh, or so? And then the question is, you know, what the the decline into account for X? It is about 2% drop. Yes, the forest, the forest impact has been a... The correct impact has been a 2% of positive impact. Yes. So we used to, okay. to reduce the 2%. Yes. The, the forex impact is plus 2%. That is the, the impact that we had. And But on the other hand, we also had the negative impact of the raw material price decrease. Okay. The steel price de decrease and the impact of this decrease is approximately also 2%. So both okay. effects are compensated, so are balanced. So we can say that the, the figures do you see are uh, in line with, with the rupian, rupees values. Got it, got it. And uh, for Metal Castillo, now what's the run rate uh, of revenues they're doing? I mean, this effectively uh, would, be, uh, would be the third quarter of decline. So are we now well below 60 million euros or uh, we are holding on to that? Okay, in Metal Castello, we had since let's say the second half of the last year, we saw an important decline on the on the sales, especially because of the uh, American U.S. market of road vehicles uh, drop. Uh, this is, uh, as you know, this is a cyclical business, and we are now in the in the bottom side of the of the cycle especially because of the uh, elections that are happening in the U.S. at the end of this year, okay? Uh, during this period, all the investments, big investments in the 
in in earth moving activities and and mining and so on are uh, let's say slowed down and reduced and we expect this to recover at the end of this year or beginning next year okay during these these quarters what we have done is we have reduced uh, our uh, expenses we have reduced the the let's say the contract laborers and we have uh, aligned the company to the new sales scenario and we will we are selling now at approximately five million uh, euros per month this is about 50 between 50 and 60 million euros this year instead of the 75 80 million we were uh, at the beginning of last year Got it, got it. Uh, yes. I have a question. Yeah, sorry. Yes. So, yes, yes. Go on, please. Uh, yeah, so I have one more question uh, before I call back in queue. So the European TV business uh, is uh, clearly witnessing the relatively slower pace of electrification. So are we seeing increase in order, uh, ordering for the IC business and also modern, this in turn also result in lower capex for the new EV orders which we are getting? How does it uh, influence our uh, Europe business? Okay, the the EV business in in Europe is uh, is slowing down slightly during this beginning of the year of the calendar year 24, mainly because of the uh, the elimination of subsidies in certain countries like like Germany. Okay, the IC business is more or less stable. We we keep the same. Uh, let's say sales on the internal combustion engine components this this business remains stable but the electrification components are a little bit delayed the all the programs are being delayed and uh, all the car makers are now oems are suffering because of this slower than expected uh, electric vehicle sales considering this however we see that the the future will this electrification will will come and uh, we will see this this electric vehicles growth in the in the future in the near future but probably as lower than we expected uh, one or two years ago regarding the new orders that we are getting in in europe approximately 40 percent of the new orders that we got are for electric vehicles so the evolution and the let's say the and to the electric grid, as uh, we are our our let's say new order portfolio are aligned with this transition, and we are increasing our electric vehicle component business. For example, uh, one explanation of the of the delay uh, of the electrification is happening in in Metal Castello too, where we got a very very important business for the electric vehicles uh, components gears especially for the uh, u.s market and these programs are not coming yet okay the the sales are very very low we we are far below our expected sales on on these components but we all let's say the the market and all our customers are informing us and saying us that this uh, transition and this growth of the electric vehicle components will come in the next quarters so we are ready to to start producing these components but unfortunately the market is not oh, got it thanks i'll fall back thank you night of nitesh Nidhi from chris capital please go ahead audible yeah. Hi, sir. So I just wanted to uh, know whether we are able to grow our business from our non-anchor customers, uh, customers X, Mahindra, Bajaj, Tata. And, you know, if you could just share how much our uh, revenue from non-anchor customers has increased in CY23 and this quarter. Uh, no. Uh, you know, Nitish, you know, let me answer this question. Uh, you know, we have talked about this in the past of about our portfolio approach. Uh, to our customers, which helps us, you know, de-risk, which helps us maintain our margin. 
and we have talked about that our uh, anchor customers which are four and we are dividing mahindra into two auto sector and uh, tractors auto sector and farm equipment sector as mahindra calls them maruti and bajaj which together would be in the range of roughly 50 to 55 percent and after that we have a whole range of customers who are in the range of 3 to 5 percent of sales including tata motors ashok leyland hyundai kia bosch there are many there are many maybe about 10 or 11 uh, customers and what and then there is a tail and then there is a long tail uh, we have close to about 50 customers in india uh, over you know uh, you know over uh, uh, one crore so so of course the anchor customers are also growing and then the focus is on i told you those 10 11 customers and then they are uh, and then they will grow if you remember we have always mentioned that we have made significant investments beginning from 21 from calendar year 21 just after covid uh, and uh, uh, those investments are backed by orders it's just that some of the orders the ramp up has been delayed which we have explained in some of our earlier calls especially uh, you know the orders that we have got for our new plant at CIE Gosu some of the orders for uh, the EV business at aluminium and at Annette Bill Forge so those are delayed and those are a mix of both anchor and these customers that we are growing and in fact we do expect uh, uh, in the second half of this year for some of the orders to ramp back. Uh, so uh, so to, to answer your question, I don't have a specific number to report as to you know how much they have grown, but yes, they are both the anchor customers and that 10, 11 customers that you are talking about are that we are talking about are very important for our, uh, for our long term growth strategy as well as margin strategy. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Uh, and the next question is uh, for Ander. Uh, just wanted to understand, are you uh, happy with the India growth? Do you think we could do something better to improve our growth? Okay. Let's say that we we are satisfied how the the business and the our the evolution of the management is is doing in in our all in. Indian verticals, okay. The the growth that we are expecting is higher than the growth that we have shown uh, in the last quarters, uh, but m mainly is because of the delay that Vikas explained before. I mean, we had a certain big projects with important delays in our customers. It's not our uh, let's say mistake or lack of of management. It's due to the delay in, in the launch of the new projects from our customers. And these launches are are happening and we are already ramping up those projects. So uh, as Vika said, we expect to to show to the market higher growth in the next quarters. Okay. Uh, probably by the third and the fourth quarter at the let's say by the end of the year we will see this this jump happening finally. Uh, most of these programs are for uh, export programs, and these you know that these sometimes the the there are certain delays on these launches, especially when we are talking about uh, new technologies like uh, electric vehicles or new pro products that we are uh, our customers are launching also in in India. So my my view is that uh, we expect to have better growth in the next uh, future okay not and right now we are a little bit above the market the weighted average uh, market in in this moment the the market grew in this quarter approximately four uh, percent you, you need to consider that the both commercial vehicles and tractor business dropped approximately 15 percent this this quarter and uh, that means that the average growth of the market is according to our portfolio is approximately four uh, percent and our growth is around six percent so we are a little bit above the market but uh, you are right that we expect to have a better growth and higher growth in the in the next quarters Nitish okay. can I add something to that if you allow me a bit of digression yeah yes sir 
Now, when Andrew talks about, you know, what is ramping back, you know, like, of course, uh, we are seeing, uh, you know, very good response to the XUV 3XO, where, you know, uh, we have substantial business for stamping and gears. Mahindra is also launching their urban, you know, those small commercial vehicles, 0.8 to 1.5 ton. We are also very hopeful about that. Of, uh, of course, uh, Mahindra's uh, pure e, BEV vehicles, but those are for later, maybe not in this year. Uh, then uh, at Bajaj, uh, we are again, uh, you know, Triumph is doing well. So there we are, the CNG bike for Bajaj is again something that we are very much looking forward to. There are a lot of export orders that Andrew talked about in, in electric vehicles. We have talked about the orders for shafts from Bill Forge. We have orders at, you know, at, uh, at our aluminium business also. Uh, you know, Maruti is launching uh, new SUVs so for our crankshaft business. That's uh, something that we are again looking forward to. Uh, tractors, I think, in Mahindra, the K2 series, it is something that, again, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, we, we, we think it will do well. And of course, there are a lot of resourcing projects from our existing customers. So no, that's the reason why there is, there has been a delay, you know, to, because to answer your question, have we been able to grow both in our anchor customers or beyond? The answer is yes, both in our anchor customers and 1011 customers. And that's the reason why I have taken the liberty to, you know, talk about some of uh, the models that we are eagerly waiting for. So that will hopefully give you a kind of preview as to why we think we are confident. And it is, as Ander said, it is more a market phenomena that the growth has slowed down. And I will talk about that. Uh, and that's why I took your permission for a little bit of digression now. So if you look at the three-year period from C21 to C23, three calendar years, Overall, our growth is quite good. You know, on, a, on an organic basis, we have grown 40% in, in these three years because that's what I said. We have been investing a lot. Uh, unfortunately, the growth has been bunched up. And, uh, and in the last two, three quarters, the growth has been less than expected. But overall, this 40% growth on an organic basis compares, you know, very well with what everybody else has done in the market. And we have done a check on... Uh, you know, at least uh, 12 to 15 of uh, the players who are in, in, in our peer group, and it compares well with that. But, but over and above that, with this growth of 40% between these three years, we have shown perhaps, uh, uh, you know, one of uh, the profit growth on the higher side compared to, uh, you know, uh, if you do a peer benchmarking. So uh, it's not that uh, we have neglected growth or we, we are... Uh, not uh, not growing or losing share, nothing of that kind. It is just that some of our growth is bunched up. So if you look at this three-year period, just to buttress the point on the bunching up, you know, I also looked at uh, the India growth performance for the last six quarters. You know, starting from Q4 C22, looked at our our growth in India and the weighted average growth of the market. Now again, on this weighted average growth, I understand, you know, some of the numbers, at least in this quarter, there is some discrepancy between SIAM and IHS numbers, but be that as it may, you know, like uh, the trend, I, I will tell you is, uh, you know, how, how, how it has bunched up. So if you look at Q4 C22, that is six quarters ago, the weighted average growth in India was roughly about 16%. We grew 26% at a recurrent EBITDA margin of 15.5%. You know, in that particular quarter, there was certain one-off. If you look at Q1 C23, the weighted average growth in India was close to minus 3%. We grew 13%. Our uh, EBITDA margin was 16.7% in India. If you look at Q2 C23, the weighted average growth in the market was roughly about 0.3%, and India operations grew by roughly about 5%. Our margins were 16.8%, EBITDA margin. Q3 C23, if you look at it, our weighted average growth in the market was roughly 2%. We grew at 1%. Lower than that, the first time we went below the uh, weighted average market growth, our margins were 16.7%. Q4 C23, the weighted average growth 
uh, 3.8%, we grew at 4%, so roughly in line with the market in Q4C23, our margins were 165 Now, if you look at Q1C24, you know, like we are talking about 4.8, you know, I know there is some discrepancy in data, but anywhere between 45 to 5.5% is the weighted average market growth, and we have grown at 6%. So if you clearly look at it, we outperformed the market, say six, you know, uh, six, you know, in Q4 C20 to 22 and Q1 C23 handsomely. Then Q2 C23 was, you know, somewhat close to the market. Q3 C23, when we went down below, Q4 and Q1 are more or less in line with the market. Q1 is slightly better than Q4. So clearly you see the trajectory is again going back. So, you know, this, this is the, the, the point that I'm trying to demonstrate. It is rather, you know, more, toward, more because of uh, the bunching up and ramping up of orders. And in fact, as I said, more or less, we are very confident that both growth and margins will be able to deliver on a longer term basis. And this data I'm trying to show you, the bunching up data between C21 to C23 and this last six quarters, just, just to show you that on a, over, on a longer term basis, we have done well both on growth as well as margins, and I think this performance will continue. Sorry for this digression, Nitish, hope, hope uh, that's okay. Yes, sir, this is quite helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much for a detailed answer. That's all from my side. Yeah, thanks, Nitish. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sonal Gupta from HSBC Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, and thanks for taking my question. So just wanted to understand, one, is there a sort of reclassification on the other operating income in India? Because, uh, I mean, last year we were doing 90 crores plus every quarter. This quarter it's dropped. So is there something uh, of a reclassification into other income? No, no. Vikas, if I can take that? Yeah, only you can take that, JP. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So th that's because um, we have started using the scrap generated by stamping within our foundry. Uh, so there has been no outside sale and uh, reuse it within the company. Okay. And the other income, partly, like you mentioned, is a 22 crore yes, um, yes. one-off subsidy, but yes. otherwise also it's slightly on the higher side. So that's uh, interest income, et cetera, is that yes. the way to look yes. at it? Yes. Okay. And uh, just, uh, I mean, like, um, I, know, I know we've had a lot of discussion already on the growth aspect, but uh, I mean, just coming at it from a sequential standpoint, right, like all the other things being equal, sequentially, we've seen good growth across categories, PVs, uh, even MHCV tractors also. So I'm just wondering that uh, the sort of 3% QOQ growth that we're seeing for you seems to be, again, significantly below market. Uh, only two wheelers were sort of flattish on a production basis QOQ. So just trying to understand, like, how do we, is that because of certain product-specific reasons again, or uh, or something of that sort, or what else is explaining this? Uh, Sonal, uh, you know, uh, if you look at sequentially, you are right about that. You know, the difference would be 3% or 6% given right. that what, uh, those numbers that you are citing. Uh, but within that, you know, like for example, in in uh, in uh, tractors, uh, the difference say between you know our portfolio of tractors and the rest is a little uh, little worse off in that case. So if you look at it sequentially, say between the Mahindra brand tractors and the Swaraj brand tractors, similarly on the two wheeler side, for example, you know Bajaj because of exports was a little lesser than what you are seeing in terms of uh, that flattish growth sequentially that you're talking about. So it is largely a mix of uh, you know the the specific customers that we are dealing with on a sequential basis on year on year basis basis it has worked differently on a sequential basis it has worked differently because of the base effect i think this all these things would just even out if once you look at uh, on, on, at it on a full year basis again you know the point being sonal i think it is really the delay in ramp up of orders which we do think will start happening in the second half of this year especially uh, in some cases like stampings xuv3 uh, 3xo is already doing well i think 6000 roughly that 5000 uh, vehicles and we expect it to go go higher as we as we go along so 
so you know like that sequential thing versus year on year thing it's uh, basically uh, uh, you know because of that specific customer base that 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 we are targeting got it. and just on this 3xo i mean like uh, would a content be uh, very different from the 300 uh, no 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 it is the reworked version i think 3 you know if you look at our uh, you know uh, the stamping bit is the biggest part of our mahindra business so overall if you look at mahindra would be in the range of uh, roughly about uh, you know that's in that related party transaction the number is there about roughly 1600 1700 crore about 60% of that is uh, is coming through stampings uh, and uh, uh, stampings is and years are the biggest uh, you know beneficiaries of xuv 3xo so we are no, no. Uh, where where I'm asking this question is like in the case of the Scorpio changeover, we lost content. So in the case of 300 to EXO changeover, we are gaining content, or we were not there in 300 earlier, and we are now getting into. No, we were there in 300 both in stampings as well as gears, and we are there in 3XO. The Bolero Scorpio thing is more of you know like those the old Bolero and old Scorpio are very old models. I think the manufacturing philosophy was different. Uh, you know, almost 20 years ago when they were, you know, when they hit the market. Uh, in 300 and 3XO, there is no such, uh, uh, you know, th there's no such change. Got it. Great. Uh, um, thank you so much. Thanks for answering. Thanks, so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jyoti Singh from Ajin Capital Markets Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so the, I have two questions. Uh, first is on the XUV3 exercise. So if you can uh, explain like how big is the order. And second, on the consolidated uh, basis, if we see Euro, that is still, uh, uh, you know, degrowth size. So when we can expect a uh, good uh, recovery side or you can say uh, on a profit side, so uh, as you were talking about second half, so is there any uh, certainty on that side? If you can explain. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, first I'll uh, you know answer about your XUV three X XO. Yeah, you know, as I told you, stampings and gears. Though those are our main, which I guess uh, was also there on XUV three double O. It is a revert. It's a much better version of three double O. So, uh, so it is basically stampings and gears, and and since it is stampings, as I told you, we have good orders on that. As far as on your consolidated growth question is concerned, I think yes. Uh, in India, we have grown six percent, and in Europe, we have dropped by seven percent. So overall, you know, we are looking at roughly about one percent growth. So as soon as the India growth picks up. And as we also told you, Q1 in Europe looks bad because of the very high base effect in uh, in Q1 of last year. So that uh, that base effect will also wear off. So you will not have such uh, drastic year-on-year uh, -year numbers going forward in Europe. Uh, but you know the main thing is the India growth. We expect to recover in the second half of the year, and that should uh, that should drive growth. So on a consolidated basis, you will see an improvement. Uh, to answer your question, and uh, just to bolster, I'll request Ander to talk about the prospects of the European. Uh, you know, we have talked a lot about India growth in the second half. I'll request Ander to talk about you know the uh, the prospects in the European market for the coming months. Yes, in, in Europe we see a, let's say a flattish market in the in the next quarters. Okay, the. The expectation of the for the car sales in in Europe is about uh, the the total figure is about 17 million uh, cars will, will be produced during this calendar year. So this is a drop of two three percent compared to the to the previous year. So we we think that we will have a, a flat uh, year, but as Vika said. Let's say that the comparison uh, in Q1 23 was uh, very high. I mean, because that was the last uh, strong quarter in 
in Europe, then we saw a certain decline during the next quarters. So the, the, the base will be different in the next quarter, so we will not be affected so much. But I, I would like also to reinforce certain message on, on India, okay? Because the, the reality is that uh, we are not concerned about our growth. I mean, the, the new order book last year was uh, really good and we fulfilled our targets. Additionally, this first quarter, we already got additional new orders of, of in, in, in India of above uh, 3 billion uh, rupees per year more in, for the next years. And what we are doing now is we are adding capacity and we are expanding our plants in uh, most of the verticals, okay? In the composites, in the stampings, in forgings, we are adding capacity and we are, uh, let's say, expanding our plants to be ready for the growth that is coming. So, in my opinion, this is a, just a temporary situation that we are having because of the main project that we launched uh, in the last year, especially in the Hosur plant in, in Billforge. This is uh, a little bit below the, our expectations. Once the customers come, we will we will see uh, an important jump and we will see that we, we are uh, at the same level or even better than our our peers okay so that's the the view that we have on on the market and uh, of course uh, we continue working uh, in a, let's say in a very strong way to continue our growth history in, in india okay thank you so much sir. and so last if you can guide us on the capex side for the uh, cy24 okay the capex uh, in in our uh, let's say you know that our guide is to have approximately five percent over uh, turnover I mean, over the sales five percent this, this is the the figure that we consider uh, reasonable and and very sound uh, in the first quarter we we had our the capex we we spent was almost one billion rupees. This is a little bit less than 5%. I mean, we are at 4.2, 4.3% over sales. But in the next quarters, we will recover uh, because some uh, additional capex is, is coming. So uh, we can say that 5% is the, the average where we are uh, comfortable. And if we, let's say, uh, make the split between Europe and, and India, the, all the growth capex is concentrated in mainly in India. Okay, so the the growth at the capex is higher in in India rather than in Europe. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Jyoti. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Pratik Kothari from Unique PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi and good afternoon, uh, sir. And the Capex again. I mean, uh, uh, can you highlight what are I mean? Are these new orders that we have won that we have to put this capex for? I mean, uh, how, how are we positioning this capex? So, another yes. question is, where is the capex in India going? In which businesses? Okay. No, I, I think in all the verticals we are growing, so we are adding capacity in in all the the verticals. Okay, if we uh, let's say make a, a deeper analysis on that. Uh, our composite business is growing uh, importantly. So this this year we are growing around uh, between 20 and 30 percent of, of growth in the composite business. So we are expanding. We are building a new plant and the new shed and a, a new machinery. So that is part of our capex. Also in the stamping uh, plant we are adding one new press line uh, that will be ready for the start of production by July approximately. That's why we expect also a jump in the second half in the stamping division. In the forging plant, we are also expanding our plant to add a new uh, crankshaft machining line. So this is an additional additional investment that we are doing. So uh, in the gears uh, division, we are also, uh, we have finalized a new a office building in order to, uh, let's say, have additional free space in the production plant 
to to continue our growth history, and we are also planning to to invest uh, in more capacity, especially in the higher the value uh, technologies like uh, gear grinding and and this kind of of uh, technologies. So those are some of the uh, examples of the different uh, uh, projects that we are now investing for, and we expect to to be ready uh, during the second half of the year. So. On top of that, the new programs that we are getting from the customers will require additional capex. So we are, we let's say the, the business continues growing and continues the normal evolution. Okay, sure. Uh, uh, entering India, we have a large scale uh, of customers where, I mean, it, the contribution from them is not much, and even our wallet share there is not high. So. Uh, uh, one, I mean, what I mean, what is our focus in terms of this long tail that we have, and uh, what kind of conversations are we having with them, and and what does it take to ramp this up to a respectable or a larger number? No, as I said, it is not about the long tail. It's about those 10, 11 customers in between that I talked to you about. You know, at, in the initial part of the conversation, like we are talking about Tata Motors, Ashok Leyland, Hyundai, Kia. Um, you know, John Deere, you know, those kind of people, you know, those, uh, you know, we are trying to grow. What it takes, you know, it takes some time before you grow with them because, uh, you know, once they are convinced about your abilities, they start growing with you. And uh, the rest, as and when, you know, we, we have a foot in the door, you know, beyond that, we have a foot in the door and whenever they want to grow with, grow with us, we are happy because, the kind of customer base that we have in India is very varied and diverse. You know, I don't think there are, uh, you know, a lot of uh, examples of this kind. So uh, what does it take? Of course, it takes, uh, you know, working with them over a long period of time to to get that going. Right. And, you know, I mean, talking about acquiring this plastic business inorganically for a while, but, I mean, obviously the valuations don't match. Uh, any possibility that we can try and think and do this internally, and, uh, build it out organically? No, organic, uh, you know, the question is, are we, uh, do we have the capabilities, does CIE have the capabilities to uh, to have, uh, to build, a, you know, a greenfield plastic plant? The answer is yes, very clearly yes. You know, uh, they have plants across the world, so CIE can help us put it there. But it's not about putting a plant. You know, in a B2B business, specifically of the kind that we are manufacturing B2B business, I think having good anchor customers is very important for that business. And that's the reason why, you know, we thought that uh, inorganic is the best way to go. Of course, as you rightly pointed out, uh, inorganic is a zero-one situation. So it is not always, uh, you know, not in our hands whether we can do that or not do that. But the issue is getting an anchor customer. You know, I'll give you an example. You know, when we wanted to get into aluminum, you know, we uh, we got our aluminum business at that time called Aurangabad Electrical, and then we got uh, a strategic customer in Bajaj. So, uh, and if we had tried to build uh, that over a period of time, it, could, it would have taken a much longer time than, you know, what, uh, what it would take through uh, the, uh, or, you know, to the inorganic route. So there are advantages, disadvantages, but yes, for plastics, given uh, that, you know, uh, in India we don't have uh, any uh, plastics business, I think we think, we still think, you know, MNA is the best way to proceed. But of course, as you rightly pointed out, MNA has its, uh, you know, conditions. And uh, let's see about that. Correct. And so my last question on Mardin. Uh, uh, I believe currently there would be some cost which would be sitting given the lack of or delay in ramp up, uh, be it India or even Europe. Uh, uh, is it something substantial? And, and also if you can talk about this, I mean, the end target is this 19% which we intend to do and we are at, we've been doing 17 for a while now. So uh, this journey from 17 to 19 also, with some comments if you can share. No, as I as I was demonstrating, you know, when I was talking about the quarterly numbers, so if you look at, again, the India quarterly EBITDA margins, you know, I'll repeat that. So in Q4 C22, we were 15.5. And then, you know, we have been, and in this quarter, we are ending at 17.2. These are all recurrent numbers without any one-off 
that we are you know that we are talking about so we have gone from 15.5 to 17.2 so that's an increase of you know 1.7 percentage but on a very high base even we are a diversified portfolio it is not just machining where you get you know higher bid uh, you know 1.7 percent in a matter of six quarters so that steady improvement will continue of course, in Europe this time, you are seeing a lower margin because of the stock correction, lower than, you know, it probably would have been lower because of lower sales, but you are also seeing that because of stock correction. So overall, you know, like Europe has been a little depressed in this quarter, but uh, India has crossed 17% EBITDA margin for the first time. The way we calculate, you know, I understand some some of, uh, you know, some of the colleagues on the call, they, they, they do it differently, but I'm saying from our the way, uh, from whatever we present, for the first time we have uh, crossed 17 percent in India, in a very very diversified portfolio, including things like stampings and iron castings and aluminium castings. So this performance, which we think is very creditable, will continue, but it will be, you know, slow and steady improvement. You are not going to see step jumps in uh, in profitability improvement. To your other question, ki because you know there have been some delays in ramp up, some cost will be sitting. You know the answer is we we understand that this is the nature of our business. So we'll have to learn to tide over some of those things, and that is what we are trying to do. Uh, does some extra cost sit during uh, periods when capacity is, uh, is less utilized? The answer is yes, but then that is the nature of our business. You know, uh, it's a B2B business. Some models work, some models don't. Some models are delayed, some models are not. So that is something we have to find a way to deal with it. So that's what we are doing. Hopefully that answers the question. Uh, sir, the line for the current participant has been disconnected. We will move on to the next participant. Yeah. The next question is from the line of Bharat Seth from Quest Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Am I audible? Yes, by the way. Go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. So, Vikas, uh, just on uh, coming to first question is on the margin in the Europe. As you rightly said that uh, because of uh, price correction and so how do we see for rest of the year? I mean, Europe margin and for the full year again bouncing back to same uh, last year level. Ender, uh, can I request you to take yes. this? You know, what is the prospect on European margins? Yes. No, w what we see is that uh, in the next quarter we will see, uh, let's say, a flat market. And uh, as you explained in the, uh, because the the drop of the of this margin in the in the first quarters was mainly because of the. Uh, Eastern holiday uh, that happened in the, at the end of the of March, so we reduce our our production. So we had a certain decline in the in the production in this quarter because of this uh, holiday week. Then uh, we think that in the next quarters, despite the market will not be fantastic and there will be no big growth, but we will recover and we are in the in in line to recover. The, the margins that we had last year. Okay, so we don't see uh, any any reason to lose that. I mean, if if everything goes as it it goes now with the uh, energy prices under control and, and raw material prices under control, we think that our margins will be at the same level than last year. So we don't see any reason to to reduce the uh, margins. Unfortunately, we don't see either uh, uh, growth or ramp up on on the on the sales mainly because of the also mega cartelos uh, market is is negatively affected by the american us market evolution during this year and we expect this recovery to happen in the during next calendar year or at the end of this year and now with uh, say infusion of the capital into this uh, our Mac will forge mexico entity so, are, do we have any plan to ramp up or additional? You know, if you can give some color on the performance of that Billforge Mexican uh, entity. Yes. 
Yes, that that entity is, is also uh, growing. Uh, we are now producing at a, let's say at a higher pace than than the previous uh, quarters, and uh, you know that we are producing CV joint components for for uh, uh, different customers, and the expectations are are good for the for the near future. The the company. Let's say we had big projects for the electric vehicles also in in Billport, Mexico, uh, and those projects have been a little bit delayed uh, in in the U.S. market also. So that's the reason our growth was uh, lower than than expected. But uh, right now the the company is performing well and is is growing. So you will uh, see in the in the next quarters how this this company continues this uh, trend. We are above three million dollars of sales per per month in that in that company. So we are at the levels that we were expecting when we launched the the plant. So we will be close to forty million dollars uh, in 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 the calendar year twenty four. And going uh, and EBITDA's side. Margin perspective, EBITDA margin perspective. So EBITDA margins uh, uh, in this business we have been affected uh, because of the huge uh, raw material price increase that we had in the last year, and also because of the uh, American market, the USMCA market is uh, is protected from the raw material point of view. The steel prices are really really high. Okay, that's. Uh, means or the, the effect of this is that the unfortunately the margins are will grow but the margins are are lower so uh, we can be between 10 to 15 percent of EBITDA margins in those businesses. Okay. And last question on Indian uh, LTT. We have done some restructuring on the management level. We have uh, elevated a two uh, division CEO. So how do we read that, and what is the purpose of that? Okay, the, the purpose of that is to structure properly the company to prepare the the organization for the growth in the next years. Okay, the uh, what we did is we reinforce our main main uh, or the best managers and the best executives that we have. We the the CEO position for the different verticals. So uh, we assured also our succession plan for the future, and we also motivate them to continue growing as they did it till now. Okay, so the strategy is to reinforce the, the growth, to reinforce the team, and to prepare the organization for the future and to have a proper succession plan in, in place. Thank you very much and all the best. Thanks, Varad Bhai. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants to please press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Sriram, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, can you share the revenue breakup in terms of uh, power source, like how much would be IC, EV, and power source neutral? Also, uh, how much of your business is dependent on uh, ice. I mean, like uh, when the transition happens from ice to EV, what would be the impact in terms of energy? Uh, let me take that. In India, of course, uh, you know, overall will be 20% or thereabout or even lesser uh, than that. In Europe, of course, we have two major businesses. I think uh, if you look at it roughly, we are 350 million euros out of which say about 65, 70 million is metal castello and the rest is forgings. So in that forging business, crankshafts are a substantial part because we, we are one of the most important uh, manufacturers of crankshafts in, in, in Europe. So in Europe, that dependence is higher, but then we are among the main, main players of crankshaft. So, uh, you know, the, the way to look at it, Sriram is like this. Uh, depending on the transition. So, for example, in India, if you are talking about 20%, we were about 5,500 crores 
in uh, in C23. And if you look at 20%, you are talking about somewhere 1,000, 1,100 crores uh, dependence on ICE, out of which, say, 60% will be four wheelers uh, and 20%, uh, 40% will be two wheelers. So the pace of transition will be very different between four wheelers and two wheelers as you, as you, as you look at it. And therefore, uh, and even if you look at the value at risk that we are talking about, uh, you know, we might be expecting not say roughly say 25, 30% penetration in the next five years for, for two wheelers and maybe uh, seven to 10% for four wheelers going forward. So if you do a value at risk, it is not very high.